Good evening and welcome to Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church Facebook Live Tuesday night Bible study where we come as a panel discussion to talk about the word of God, to get a deeper meaning, to look at the places where we can apply the word better to our lives and to allow ourselves to share the word with one another. We also are sharing that word with you out there and we hope that during the broadcast tonight that you would take the time to send in a comment, a question, or if you just want to give a hallelujah, a shout out, an amen, we'll accept all those as well. As customary on our panel, um, before we get started, we'd like to introduce each one of our panelists, and then we will have prayer, and we will get into tonight's study which is our conclusion of the whole armor of God. Tonight, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So, tonight, let us first introduce our, our panelists, and we have a special guest with us tonight uh, in the person of Pastor Jamal Johnson, who is the pastor of Mount Sinai, Missionary Baptist Church, is that correct? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So he is directly to my left, Pastor Johnson, if you would, please, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, good to be with you all. I've heard a lot about you all's panel discussion, so I'm glad to be with you all tonight. Good to be with my, my friend. <laughs> amen. 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 So Pastor uh, Johnson is no stranger to Agape, and he is a good friend of ours. Immediately to my right is our own agape, Reverend uh, Tanika Williams. Reverend Williams. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Reverend Brown, for the introduction. I look forward to tonight's panel, and I'm especially stoked about our guest panelist on this evening, Reverend Johnson. Amen. Amen. Me, me too. I, I think something's going to be falling down. Oh, my. Praise <laughs> the Lord. And... Uh, Immediately to my far right, none other than, um, look at him, man. He's really sharp tonight. It's got a horse. Our assistant pastor. <laughs> you don't got to tell everybody what's going on. Yeah, I'm just saying. Our assistant pastor, uh, assistant pastor Kenneth Williams. Hey, Amen. We just thank everyone for being with us on this evening. Um, really looking forward to uh, the conclusion, the sword of the spirit, ready to dive into this word and have a good time in God. And again, we do, we don't have to welcome him. He's family. We welcome Pastor Johnson. Yes, and, sir. Thank you. And, we, um, and we're excited about it. Let's, let's get wrong. Amen. Amen. I'm with you on that, Sister Pastor Williams. So without further ado, let us pray. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come before you right now, O oh God, and we lay ourselves upon your altar, Father, and we ask that you would open up this word in our understanding, God, to your sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How we, Lord, need to use that weapon and make sure it's in our arsenal and we have an understanding of uh, its application that it's not just for a time that was 2,000 years ago, but a time right now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we go about our lives, that your word can be applied in every situation in our lives. Bless those out there that are listening, Father, that they may receive from this. And bless our panelists tonight, God, as you allow the Holy Spirit to use them mightily that uh, the revelation word that they will give to the people in the, the, the rhema and uh, the knowledge, O oh God, and wisdom that will come from their mouths, that it be blessed and ordained by you. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, we will conclude tonight with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our last piece of the whole armor of God. So um, we are all very excited about this piece of armor um, that we have because with the word of God that is in us and our knowledge of his correct application, 
gives us the capability to put things down in our lives that must subject themselves to God's word. So, without further ado, let us go to our first um, introduction for tonight's study. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The six piece of armor that Paul discusses in Ephesians 6 is the sword of the spirit, which represents the word of God. For a Roman soldier, the sword served as an offensive weapon against enemies. If we are lacking in knowledge of God's word, we will struggle to fight against the enemy. Psalm 119 and 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we're going to open up tonight with um, an introductory question is, um, how important do you feel God's word is? And we'll start with Pastor Johnson. The importance of the word of God is as air is to life. The word of God and my understanding of it and experience with it is we need it every day. Amen. Amen. We, we have we drink water every day. We eat every day. Whether we eat the right thing or the wrong thing, <laughs> we eat <laughs> every day. Amen. And the word of God is to be digested every day. Because we are taking in, as you read, knowledge. And so every day you are filling up. And you don't always have to understand it either. Mm. But you need to read it mm -hmm. for familiarity. Mm. And Amen. so you will know the pages as you flip through it. Now you mentioned you mentioned a scripture or a verse. And I might not know exactly where it is, but if I have been reading through this Bible. You give me a couple of seconds and a minute, and I'll turn Amen. to it. Amen. Amen. Because I'm familiar with it, because I've read it, and I am studying it. And I think that's something that should be done every, every day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Pastor Johnson. Mm -hmm. Reverend Williams. Could you repeat the question? Amen. So, we're, uh, introductory, um, why is the word of God important in our lives? Um, it's, it's directions. Uh, you know, I agree with, with um, Pastor Johnson. It, it is like air to life. And it's also our, our manual. Mm -hmm. um, it is our direction. It's our navigational system Amen. Um, that we need to at least know how to use. We may not know all the directions and all the highways and all the side roads, mm -hmm. but we need to use, know how to use the navigational system to get to where we need to be, and that's what the word is. Hallelujah. Sister Pastor Williams? Um, the word of God says, uh, man cannot live by bread alone, by but word. by every word right. that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So it is basically our life sustainer. Amen. Um, Amen. And so um, you know, like Reverend Williams and Pastor Johnson said, it's a lot of times it's, it's that nutrient, spiritual nutrient that we need to help us sustain as we're, you know, walking this daily walk, fighting this daily battle. Um, so it is that important that we understand when when Jesus um, was in the, you know, the desert. We coming there. We going there. I know. <laughs> but, so in order for you to really fight the devil because he knows the word too. Amen. So Amen. then we have to be able to know the word just like he knows the word. And then like Pastor Johnson said, and I thought that was very good, you may not understand it right off top. It may not be, you know, but as you continue to grow in God, he gives you more and more understanding. And it's amazing to me how even those of us who have been in the word for a while, you can read again and get a different Yes. You know, revelation and understanding. Yes. So, absolutely. Absolutely. That important. Absolutely. Amen. A good example of that. No, no, that's a good example of that is two books of the Bible that I steered away from for years. That was the book of Job. 
Mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And but I'm a systematic reader of scripture, meaning I I read I use a Bible reading plan every year or reading every day. And so I was reading through Job and I was reading through Revelation. And I was not clearly grasping what it was saying. I didn't understand in Job. I didn't understand the three friends. I didn't understand their interaction. I didn't know what God was trying to say to Job. I just didn't understand. And of course, in the book of Revelation. Mm-hmm. A lot of symbolism. <laughs> oh, yeah, every, a lot of stuff in the Revelation. <laughs> Amen. But Amen. The more I kept reading it, Pastor mm-hmm. William, the Lord said, as you read, I'm going to help you understand it this Correct. time. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. So I, the, mm-hmm. that year I read it and I said, oh, okay, now I see what's, what's happening. And the next year I came back and the next year I came back. And I began to understand more. But Amen. people have shied away from tough scriptures yes. mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. tough passages. Mm-hmm. But if you keep reading it, mm-hmm. because God mm-hmm. is who he is, mm-hmm. he's a revealer. He reveals to you mm-hmm. what the text is saying. And he'll, and he'll help you study. And it may be, it may happen that the church may come up and study that. Mm-hmm. Or Amen. somebody may give you um, some material to study. Mm-hmm. Right. So he helps you understand if you are willing to engage yes. in this study. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Reverend, Reverend Roland on Facebook says, B-I-B-L-E, basic life instructions before leaving earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm. 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 So let us go to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 4. And we will start this study tonight with with verses 1 through 11. This is a very familiar uh, passage of scripture as um, uh, Pastor Williams introduced saying that uh, Jesus in the desert. Uh, But as we read this, how we see uh, the power of the word and its application. Then Jesus was held up in the spirit, was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the son of God, Command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we're going to start with that one first, and then we're going to move to the next one. So Reverend Williams. Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, looking at the scripture this says scripture um, from just a, a bird's eye view and not going line for line, but just as a bird's eye view, um, we see Jesus interacting with his chief nemesis, our chief nemesis. Mm-hmm, okay? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the interaction doesn't just take place in one specific area. Amen. He there are different settings. So we're in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Um, you know, in his lowest point, what would be a natural man's lowest point, 40 days, no food. I, I mean, I don't know what I would do 40 days with no food, you know, um, and 40 nights. And so when the enemy came, he approached him in a way um, where he's exalting him and acknowledging who he is and tempting him with food okay so that was the first temptation so that was the first situation and then they left and then they went to a holy city so we went from the field (laughs) to the city we're not down there yet no okay i'm too far down okay so bottom line (laughs) is he tempted jesus in this particular set of scripture then He tempted Jesus with where he was weakest. And that is what the enemy does. He Mm -hmm. knows us. He knows our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to get us. 
And so when we're at our weakest, that's where God is at his strongest. But Amen. we have to pull out that word mm -hmm. in order to be able to persevere. Um, if you've ever been in a situation, you feel like you can't go a little bit further um, or, or, or get to the next point. If you just say a specific scripture mm -hmm. and you feel the peace of God come over you to go mm -hmm. a little bit further mm -hmm. um, and, and to do what you need to do to be able to get through that situation. The trouble in the wilderness won't last always. But God does. Amen. 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 Pastor Williams. Um, as we look at this, um, and, 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 and looking at how the enemy can try to use the promises of God against you. Amen. And then, like Reverend Williams says, at your weakest point, if you don't know what God's promises are mm -hmm. and not just his promises, but his instructions mm -hmm. at the same time, Amen. then you can fall into some traps that are set to throw you off track, mm -hmm. even at your weakest point. So here, um, you know, the devil is saying, if you are the son of God, Tell the stones to become loaves of bread. So, like everyone said, he knew he could do it. Mm -hmm. But Amen. was he going to do it or was he going to be obedient to what God, the instructions that God had given him, even though at that time he was at his weakest point? If if we look at this in the natural, if God tells us to fast the day, mm -hmm. we get hungry, and we got the money to go get it. And the devil starts speaking to us. Uh, you know you want to go and stop by McDonald's and, mm -hmm. and get that, you know, that that burger. And God ain't going to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to remember that when God gives us instructions and gives us tasks, you know, we have to be able to um, stay obedient as Jesus until the end. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. So this comes off of the heels of Jesus's baptism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great event in Jesus's life. The latter part of chapter three says, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With mm -hmm. him, I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. So God, God gives the affirmation to mm -hmm. his son, Jesus. He experiences what we know as the baptism, the Amen. public uh, profession of our faith. Then verse 1 of chapter 4 says, Then Jesus was led mm -hmm. by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I stop right there. Led by the Spirit mm -hmm. after having come off of a joyful experience of baptism, then I am led away Amen. by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing that we don't like in Christendom is to experience the test. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Amen. We like to slide by. But going back from Abraham when he was off, mm -hmm. went up to the mountain with his son, it was a test. It was a mm -hmm. test. So when I look at this passage of scripture, led by the Spirit, it was a test. And the, the, verse, the verb says to be tempted, a very intentional. To be tempted. Amen. So what does that say? That says, number one, the spirit will lead you into something mm -hmm. to see how you are going to handle mm -hmm. Amen. this situation. Mm -hmm. Now we can come up with any number of, mm -hmm. oh, plenty of mm -hmm. situations where you are tempted. But the Christian needs the temptation. Mm. Or let me let me explain. I am I am I am on a, a weight loss. <laughs> and I have been convicted by the fact that I've learned that uh muscle burns fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. And so I'm doing cardio cuz I like to cycle. But I've been convicted over the last couple of days. You need some weight lifting. Absolutely. With your cardio. <laughs> because muscle burns fat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
tempting and being led by the spirit burns carnality. Amen. Oh, come on. Oh, Amen. stop right there. Amen. Say it one more time. When you allow the spirit to lead you, mm -hmm. the tempting being led by the spirit will burn the carnality. Mm -hmm. If you don't give in to the temptation, you come out of the of this of this experience after 40 days being tempted and, and being hungry. If you come out of it, you come out spiritually stronger. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if I discipline myself through this test of trying to lose some inches and pounds and allow the, the, the muscle, the exercise, mm -hmm. the weightlifting to burn the fat, by the time my 50th birthday gets, I'm going to be looking good. <laughs> <laughs> so I said it to say, the Christian should not avoid the lead, being led by the Spirit mm -hmm. into a, a place that doesn't have anything. A desert, mm -hmm. barren, mm -hmm. no water, mm -hmm. knowing that Satan is going to throw some things at you. Mm -hmm. The Christian becomes stronger when we can take the word. When I let you get to that part about the word, <laughs> uh, when you can take the word of God and then throw it back at Satan. That's it. That's why you need that knowledge. That's it, right there. That's why you need that memory. Amen. And Christians don't like to memorize either. Mm -mm. Amen. But you need memory. Mm -hmm. Amen. Scripture memory mm -hmm. in order to fight the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which is why in Psalm 119, he said, mm -hmm. Thy word have, have I, I hidden hid in my heart right. that I might not sin, sin against you. Right. So that. I can pull it up out of me when I need mm -hmm. it. When I need it, because let's be honest, when those tests come like that, mm -hmm. and you out on the street somewhere, mm -hmm. you ain't running. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, just hold. Let me run, get my let, Bible. Let me call so, my pastor. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> no, no, no. You, 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 you have to have that in you at that moment to be ready to apply. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's important. I think even this is an example for. Uh, leadership and the body of Christ to help one another. That first, that uh, third chapter when it says he had been baptized mm -hmm. and then immediately after he, after he was baptized, he goes into what? Temptation. Mm -hmm. Listen, now Jesus has been studying the word his whole life. Mm -hmm. Now think about the, 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 the sinner or the, the new convert that comes and you give your life to Christ, and when you immediately walk out, there's a temptation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's important for us um, to, as we get new converts, to help them with learning the word of God and getting into that spiritual cycling mm -hmm. with the word of God right. because mm -hmm. that temptation is going to come almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No almost about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I mean, because, you know, the word also says that, uh -huh. you know, some seed fell on good ground, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some seed fell amongst the thorns, some mm -hmm. fell on the stones. Mm -hmm. um, the enemy comes to snatch the word the minute it goes out. It is trying to throw distraction at the believer and the non-believer. So that their mind would not be focused on what that word intent is to get to the very root mm -hmm. of something that is going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when the word takes root in us, it, then it really takes root in our heart. And then they, we have the, app, uh, you know, capability to bring it, bring it back up. Man. I'm talking too much tonight. Okay. One of the temptations that, that Christians have is too much TV. So I hear a lot of Christians say, can't sleep at night. Can't sleep. Can't sleep at night. I had one of those nights Sunday night. And I don't normally have that kind of a night. But Sunday night I couldn't sleep. And so I did something that I don't normally do. I put out my cell phone and I began to listen to one of our fraternity brothers sermon, um, Robert Scott in Charlotte, St. Paul's Church. And I listened to his sermon. And I left out of the bedroom, got quiet, and I listened to the sermon. And when the sermon was over, 
I went back into the room, back into the bed, and went straight to sleep. The word, the word will always do its job. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Go- the word is going to fight out distractions, temptations, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. worldliness, carnality. If we use it, now some mm-hmm. people would say, "Oh, you just being so uh, a holy roller or super spiritual." No, no, it it is the word of God, and you need it for every minute of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Okay, let us go to the next uh, verse. We're going to start at verse 5. And it reads, Then the devil took him up into the holy city. He took him into the holy city. Set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Pastor Williams. When you look at it, First, he took him into, and I, I think Reverend Williams is going to get to this too. First, he took him into the wilderness, a dry, desolate place. Okay? Said, all right, you hungry, you tired, turn those stones. Mm-hmm. Feed yourself. Mm-mm, I ain't going to do that. Then he took him to the holy city. Holy, holy city highest point of the temple so basically he's sitting him on his temple Mm -hmm. and then says if you're the son of god you know the script says jump and the angels are going to protect you and they'll hold up you with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone knowing because he was led by the spirit what he was supposed to be doing at this time Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus was able to say I must you must not test the Lord your God so as we read this portion of the scripture as Christians we've got to know when God is telling us to do and when he's telling us not to do Mm -hmm. and not allowing the enemy to cause us to jump before time Mm. not to move before time not to uh pass the preach this past sunday waiting can we wait on god Mm -hmm. to -hmm. do what he says he's going to do or is the 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 enemy going to tell us okay well you can go ahead and do this yourself versus us staying under the protection of god even if that means us still being in an uncomfortable situation Mm -hmm. so here you're talking about now basic human necessity your 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 hunger then you know your physical body being hurt you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and so all of this jesus is showing us how to be able to take the scripture and use it as our weapon against the enemy. So if he throws at us, we can throw it right back at him. Amen. Amen. Pastor John? I think another key word in both of these verses that we've re- looked at so far is the is the word if mm-hmm. and the phrase, if you are the son of God. Mm-hmm. So that's in verse 3, and now we're in verse 6. If you are the son of God. So part of the devil's tempting and trickery Mm -hmm. is to question your identity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Question who you you are. Yes. And if you are not careful, you will question, Mm -hmm. am I saved? Am Mm -hmm. I a Christian? Who am I? You you will go through that series of questioning 
-hmm. in your mind and began to doubt your very existence, which is why people commit suicide, mm -hmm. people overdose, mm -hmm. they take drugs, people drink, they do all kinds of things because they're not really sure of who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he says, if, that's a 50-50 chance, do you really know you're the son of God? Mm -hmm. Or do you not know you are the son of God? Jesus, knowing his identity, mm -hmm. and it was affirmed in the latter part of chapter 3. I am the son of God. This is my son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus is confronted, he comes into this, this tempting with a confidence or, or spiritual armor knowing exactly who he is. Mm -hmm. And the Christian, whether it's a baby Christian or a Christian that has been saved for 30 years, you must know who you are in mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. and continually. People will question you. You have to be even, you have to, you have to deal with that in your house, in the church, on the job, in the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You better know who you mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. in God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Reverend Williams. Everything that Pastor Johnson just said. Um, so I was um, on my way in to, to Bible study. I had received an email um, from, from someone and the person had was, was thanking me um, saying, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for believing in me. Um, the past few years, I've just been lost and didn't know what to do, where mm -hmm. to go. Didn't, when I looked in the mirror, I saw nothing. Um, and that nothingness comes from, not really knowing who you are in Christ. And as I was listening to the word, as, uh, as Pastor Williams was talking, I wrote a note because then I thought about that email Amen. that I just read. And I wrote down, Jesus maintained his personality. Mm -hmm. um, I said, uh, he didn't feel the need to explain himself. Amen. He didn't feel the need to justify right. who he mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. He already knew who he was. Right. I don't mm -hmm. have to explain to you who I am. God already told me who I am. Mm -hmm. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. So he didn't get into qualms about, you know, who he was. Mm -hmm. He did, he didn't come back when, when Satan says, you know, somebody says, if you a pastor, mm -hmm. you know, he you don't didn't even come need to respond to that. He responded you to just that. Do what, do what you do. Amen. 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 So with all three of these com comments about knowing who you are, um, I think sometimes Christians can get a little bit too big for their britches. Mm -hmm. And this kind of reminded me of King David when he told the captain of the guard, Joab, go out and I want you to count all of the people that I got charge over. And he said, King, you don't want to do this. Right. You're already the king. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has already appointed you. Right. He said, no, no, no. I want to know exactly how many people. And we know from the end of that story that God dealt with David mm -hmm. and that he put the sword in and he killed so many people. Mm -hmm. um, pride sometimes. Uh, for Christians, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's very dangerous and can put you in a place where you think that you can do anything, but actually you're tempting God. Mm -hmm. wow. You have to walk very humbly Amen. in this Christian walk, but in the humility, knowing with confidence that you are anointed. Amen. Right. right. And that anointing right. fills you. Right. Amen. And you may feel weak at the fasting for that. He was hungry. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, there's a difference between the a feeling and an emotion and the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right. The spirit is mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. emotional. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Yeah. The right. spirit is solid. Right. 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 That's right. Right. I can feel one way, yeah. but the spirit got me in a whole altogether. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something, something that Christians often miss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get we tie the spirit with mm -hmm. our emotion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you should not tie the two. Take the emotions out. Take the emotions out. Yeah. Let the spirit be the spirit. Yeah. The, the spirit has knowledge. The spirit has wisdom. The spirit has strength. Amen. The spirit has a job to do. A director. I mean, the mm -hmm. spirit knows what its job is. If you let the spirit lead, according to verse one, led by the spirit. You're going to be tempted with, well, we just in two situations so far, mm -hmm. 
but we see that he'll lead you into a place where you think that I need more food than I than I need, or put me up on this pedestal, and mm-hmm. I think that I'm I'm the man, amen, I'm big nail, mm-hmm. amen. You know, this is mine. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you don't tip God that way. You bring that down in the humbleness. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. So let's go to the last uh, verses of this scripture. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I think we're back to you, Pastor John. Well, this time the devil takes him to, the scripture says, uh, another high point. This time it's a very high point. This time it has all the kingdoms of the world and all of its splendor. That's power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Authority. Yes. Mm-hmm. We see this being played out so much in our world now where people want so much power yep. and they're hungry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're hungry for power. And if they don't get it, they act a certain way. They say certain things. They put people down. And in verse 9 says, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give this to you. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you going to give this to me? Well, where did it come from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, if you believe in the pre-existing Christ, Christ was in the beginning mm-hmm. Amen. when all things were formed. Mm-hmm. Right? So in John 1 and 1, mm-hmm. all things were created by me and for me. Mm-hmm. So now you want me to think, you're going to try to trick me to think that what's already mine, you're going to give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that, That's that, good. That's good. That doesn't quite make sense. That's good. This already <laughs> belongs to me. That's good. Huh? So the devil tries to trick us to try to give us things that are already ours. Mm-hmm. Amen. Ask, and the Lord will give. You know, the Lord provides. I don't. I don't need to accept anything that's false, carnal, mm-hmm. from the world. Mm-hmm. If the Lord wants me to have it. Mm-hmm. Amen. And if I'm supposed to have it, mm-hmm. He will grant it to me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Graham Williams, <laughs> you that smiling behind. <laughs> Because I jumped out, you know, earlier, so I've been waiting for this moment. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, when, when looking at, at this scripture and thinking about, okay, I was in a high place. I knew I heard from the Lord. I am the son of God. Mm-hmm, He's mm-hmm. well pleased in me. Mm-hmm. And now I have to go out into this world in various situations. Mm-hmm. Um, I go from a high point of being exalted as a son of God to a dry place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I leave a dry place and I go back into a holy place up high, the church that's supposed to represent me. And then I end up with the potential of being ruler of the world. The emotions in that. So many emotions in that. Mm-hmm. So many. Um, and all this time, I don't see anywhere where where Jesus had broken the fast because in the end it said, you know, he, they ministered to him. Amen. So I interpret that as they refilled him. They refueled him mm-hmm. with whatever he was in need of. So he was still in a fasting situation, leaving that high. And how often are we sometimes afraid as Christians to come during the altar call Mm -hmm. and pray Mm -hmm. or come when the doors of the church are open and resubmit ourselves to Christ or when we are lost in the world and 
and we're embarrassed to come up and confess Christ or we do and then we're embarrassed to tell our friends because we know what situations we're going to go back to mm -hmm. it might be the wilderness it mm -hmm. might be a high place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we don't know how we will respond so we won't say that we're believers we won't say mm -hmm. that we're called we won't amen do we those worship. things we won't worship mm -hmm. we're embarrassed right. we're afraid we are paralyzed by fear mm -hmm. and it all goes back to because we don't know who we are in christ christ never lost his personality he never lost his perspective he never got into quarrels about who he was in in god mm -hmm. and what his purpose was mm -hmm. he just fed back the word as you as as satan presented the word in every single situation he didn't worry about what everybody else thought. You the son of God, but you out here in the desert hungry. Amen. You're the son of God, and then now you're sitting on top of a temple, so what are you going to do to us? He never got caught up in those things. And finally, I noticed that by the third time, and I don't know if that was a hunger or what, but he was like, enough, away with you. Amen. I've already said my piece, and Satan had to flee because he knew who he was. Mm -hmm. And so when we use that word, regardless of if we're in a high place, a dry place, or a low place, remembering who we are in Christ and standing firm on that word to say, enough, Satan, mm -hmm. enough. Amen. Um, God will come in and restore and give us what it is that we need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as you were saying that, um, it reminded me, Joe, <laughs> Pastor Johnson. Uh, he was hit with three things. Mm -hmm. Lost all his children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lost all his possessions. Uh -huh. His body was torn down with sword. Mm -hmm. Three things the enemy hit him with. Mm -hmm. But when his wife said, well, why don't you just curse God? He said, you talk like a foolish woman. Right. You know. Um, and at that point, he was moving towards the end of that book. Uh, to full restoration. Mm -hmm. Enough. Amen. He had reached enough. the point of enough. Amen. Um, in the spirit, possibly even in the natural, um, but he had reached that point and mm -hmm. had to stand on the word and say, "Enough, get behind me, Satan." Amen. Um, so. um, I always like when we have interaction. Uh, Reverend Roland said a couple of weeks ago, I heard this about these verses. One, the devil made a reasonable request. Two. He made a legitimate offer. Three, he made a lie sound like the truth. <laughs> Absolutely. The request <laughs> to change stone to bread, it was reasonable because Jesus was hungry after not eating for 40 days. It was legitimate because the devil is called the God of earth. Although temporary and not the whole truth, he made it sound like truth. When Jesus responds to the request of false worship, it is the response we should always have, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. This will make the uh, their devil flee. If, if I could, um, and Reverend Roland, I, I thank you for that comment, because I, earlier I was going to mention, so in the beginning, with Eve in the garden, when the word was presented in a false pretense, mm -hmm. amen, the word not received, because Adam had the word, the word not received was not in that person in order to turn that thing around to say, that's not what God said, this is what he said. Mm -hmm. And so when, so when, the enemy presents false words to us. Mm -hmm. If you don't know the real word, mm -hmm. you'll fall for the false word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And when Reverend Roland said that, it you know, it made me because I was going to bring that out earlier that Jesus knew the real word. Even when the devil said that thing, uh, it says in the word that you won't dash your foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. He said, Hold up. It says, don't tempt God. So in other words, don't tell me something false mm -hmm. 
because that's not what it really says. And that's why people have to know the word for themselves, mm -hmm. what it really says, because people will say things um, in the street, ministers from pulpits, mm -hmm. you know, nothing against anybody. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to know the word for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and the biggest mm -hmm. thing is, you know, Jesus tells them, I, he offers him all of these things. And as Christians, we have to not get caught up in the trap of wanting the blessings of God without serving God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because a lot of times we, you know, we, we, we want the house, we want the car. God, give me the husband. God, give me the this. God, give me the, give me the, give me the, give me. But then when God says, I need you to worship me. We get tempted with the other stuff instead of understanding. And Jesus really taught us this here. You must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So you're not serving the stuff. You're not serving the kingdom. Right. You're not serving yourself. We're here to serve God. We are, you know, his body mm -hmm. fitly joined together. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to take God's word. And in those situations when we're tempted, in those situations where um, the enemy tries to throw things at us that would tempt us to stray away from God, and like Reverend Rolon said, it looks legit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always reasonable. You know, it it, it's, it's almost yeah. like when you see something on TV and they say, this is the, the miracle, this, and then you start seeing how it worked for this person, worked for that person, and it looks legit mm -hmm. and you saying okay I want to go get that or I got a good one when you see a drug commercial and the commercial says okay it's going to stop this and that's all you hear it's going to stop this so you jump at it and then you don't listen to the rest of the commercial saying mm -hmm. but it's going to cause this 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 and this this and this so you may be worse off by trying to listen to the devil and let him tempt you to take something that God don't want you to have yet or at all or at all or something that God has already predestined for you to have you just got to wait to get it mm -hmm. amen amen so in this worship this dialogue back and forth between Satan and Christ it's a mental engagement Mm -hmm. And Jesus is able to go toe to toe with him on a mental mm -hmm. engagement. He's using the word of God. What that says to me is that Christians ought not be afraid to worship God with their thoughts. Amen. With their mind, with their thinking. It's okay to think spiritually. Because if you think spiritually, then you can ward off the carnal thoughts. But we think just because we worship, when we worship, I worship with my hands. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I mm -hmm. worship through my singing. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady said the other day, I cut my worship music on in the morning, and that's my devotion. Okay, that's good, and you need a good song, you know. Amen. You know, Amen. You know, Amen. I'm, not, I'm not against that. But the sword of the spirit means mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A song may help me, mm -hmm. but what's really going to cut mm -hmm. and dice Amen. is going to be the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to learn to mentally worship God. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. Then it goes on your heart, your soul, and your mm -hmm. body. But put your mind in the game. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You have to. Amen. Amen. As a man thinketh, so he is. Right. Praise the Lord. About that last week with that, that, you know, with, with, with the helmet. With you, the helmet. You, you can't, you have to be Guard able yeah. to yeah. allow God to get into your thinking because it controls the rest of what you do. Mm -hmm. If he's not in your thinking, mm -hmm. if he's not in the mental aspect the whole, everything else is going to get messed up. Well, you know, uh, Pastor Williams, when you say that, if you're not thinking about God, mm -hmm. you won't be led by God. Mm -hmm. 
So if Jesus wasn't even thinking about God, he wouldn't even made it up to the right. desert experience. Correct. You know, because, you know, let this mind be in you. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. That was in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it, you have to give yourself to thought about the Lord mm -hmm. to lead him, to let him lead you to where he wants to take you to. Exactly. You know, otherwise, whatever's on your mind will lead you to that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be in some trouble and mm -hmm. drifted off into some wrong, this, that, and the other, and find yourself far away from God and then ask yourself, How did I get here? Mm -hmm. Amen. And you weren't thinking. As old folks used to say, broke, busted, and disgusted. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let us go to um Hebrews chapter four, verses one through three, and then we're gonna do Hebrews four, nine through twelve. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now, we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. Amen. My turn. I think it's your turn. Okay. Grim Williams. The invitation still stands. Amen. From the beginning to the end, the invitation is still there. It says, therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it, meaning that it is a choice. Mm -hmm. The invitation is there. Um, who God is, is there. Um, and he will provide us with the rest, uh, whatever that may mean, because it may look different from person to person. Um, but it's there and we have to make a conscious choice and decision. Even going back to Jesus' experience that we just discussed, Jesus had to make a choice. Uh, when Pastor Johnson was talking about it was a mental mm -hmm. uh, engagement, mm -hmm. it was also cognizant choices, conscientious yes. strategic choices that Jesus was making mm -hmm. because everything that was presented made sense in the context. I'm hungry. Why not just turn? What is one piece of bread going to do if I take this rock and just turn it into mm -hmm. a piece of bread? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. not the calling. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Amen. temptation is there, but that's not the calling. So Jesus knew it was bigger than that. And he knew what the end promise was going to be. And he knew what the purpose was because it still stood even in his time. And he didn't succumb in his mental engagement, uh, feeling his own emotions. He looked at something bigger because he knew it was something bigger and he was careful and did not fall short. Amen. Amen. Pastor says it all the time. Pastor Johnson hit, hit on it a little bit at the beginning. If you go back to the beginning, mm -hmm. it's believing Amen. that he is God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if I believe he is, then, you know, I said this all the time, God's word will let me know that he can. Mm -hmm. And if I dig a little bit deeper, it'll show me that he will. Yes. So then I won't have to, um, I, I will know as I'm walking this walk, even when it gets hard, when it gets tough, he says, I'm going to have rest. And he says, he says, for only we who believe can enter his rest. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. comes with belief. Mm -hmm. So the word, the sword of the spirit, the word, we have to believe it in our hearts. Yes. Mm -hmm. It can't really, honestly, it just can't be words on 
a piece of paper because I, like I said, I know people who can quote scripture up, down, know where it's at, know what it, you know, know it. Can cro- probably someone cro- quoted in Hebrew and in Roman, mm-hmm. but is it in your heart? And do you believe it? Mm-hmm. And so those are the things that we have to, as we get the good news, as we, you know, Amen. digest God's word, asking the spirit to lead us so that, you know, we have to believe it in our hearts Amen. that his word is true. Mm-hmm. And that's the only way you're going to be able to use that sword. Mm-hmm. The sword is there, but if you don't believe the sword is there, how can you use it? Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. The faith to use it. So to combine what you said, uh, Pastor, he says, "In um, for we also have had the gospel preached to us, the mm-hmm. good news, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard it did not combine it Amen. Mm-hmm. with faith. Mm-hmm. So not only do you need to know the word, mm-hmm. the mental part, mm-hmm. but you got to have the faith to go along with the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Amen. Because Amen. without faith, you don't please God. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Now, when you start believing, and you start acting on faith because of the word, because the word is going to tell you some things that don't make logical sense. Amen. Right? Amen. It makes spiritual sense, but not logical right. sense. And you try to apply logical to spiritual, and you may miss out. Right. But when you put the faith to say, I know this doesn't quite make logical sense, but my faith tells me to go with this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then when you do that, God opens up all kinds of doors and protects you in all kinds of ways. Mm-hmm. Amen. So the for example, God says, bring him a tent. Mm-hmm. Bring me a tent. Mm-hmm. I'll open up windows. Then a part that we don't really quote is I'll keep the devourer. Yes. Come on. Away Come on. From you. Mm-hmm. you mean I give my tithe, my tent, and the Lord protects me, keeps the devil? That doesn't quite make sense to me. But if you try it on faith, mm-hmm. It work. It work. It does work. It does work. Amen. Amen. So, so that's a little segue there, Pastor Johnson, because we're going to go into Hebrews four nine and twelve, and we're going to bring this whole rest thing home by the Word of God, because the Word is what's giving us the rest. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hebrews uh, four nine through twelve, and it reads. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Just looking at verse 12, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. It's amazing how God's word can uplift you and convict you at the same time. Mm. How God's word can, um, you know, chasten you and you know build you up all at the same time Amen. because in essence not, as the word says nothing is hidden from God so as we study his word and um, are able to digest his word and as Pastor Johnson says you know bring that word mentally with your faith spiritually 
Amen. We're able to then walk the way God wants us to mm -hmm. and, you know, do as Jesus said. We live by, not by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Because we believe that it will not only fill our uh, spirit man, mm -hmm. but it also will take care of everything else. If yes. we have the faith to believe, yes. beloved, but above all things, I wish that you will prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So God wants us to have those things, but what he wants us to do is know him and we know him through his word. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get fed through him. Amen. I'm going to ask a question. What's the difference? <clears throat> between the seventh day and the Sabbath day. The difference between the seventh day mm -hmm. and the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. About the seventh day in these words, and on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. Mm -hmm. We have equated, equated the seventh day to the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. and you could look at it that way mm -hmm. but we also need to understand that the Sabbath is a day of worship mm -hmm. but it might not be your day of rest mm -hmm. it could amen, but it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be so for those of us who preach and minister the word of God on a Sunday Sabbath day we're working <laughs> <laughs> and we're putting out. Amen. Yeah. You're right. You're right. We built up to preparing a message all week long. Mm -hmm. We put all of that time in, plus everything else you're doing. Mm -hmm. And to deliver that word, you put out a lot of energy mm -hmm. on a Sunday morning. And if we were in normal flow of worship, everything that happens on a mm -hmm. Sunday Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily for the minister or some other person that your rest day. So what that says is you need a seventh day for rest, mm -hmm. for doing something that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. No rest, no this, no other distractions, no email checking. Mm -hmm. It is to be a day of rest. In that day of rest, you do need this. Amen. You do need the word of God. Because most people say, when they're going to they get some rest, they're going to make sure they have something good to eat. And then, <laughs> we're going on vacation. Well, what are we going to eat? <laughs> but when you have your seventh day of rest, mm -hmm. you need to have this, this mm -hmm. word of God, and have yourself a good, good meal on the word to fill you, put back in you, away from this and internet and Facebook and Instagram and all of these, and people and all of these other distractions. You just need a day of rest, which includes a good dose of the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Reverend Wade. For the word of God is alive and active, meaning that it's not static. Amen. Uh, it's not stuck. We might be static and stuck mm -hmm. <laughs> spiritually, mm -hmm. but it is not, mm -hmm. meaning that it can be activated at any point in time. You know, mm -hmm. going back to the main story, all Jesus had to do was reach into the word and, and activate. Right. Uh, and so that's that's how we should be when it comes to the word. So with it being alive and active and being ready to be activated mm -hmm. at any given moment, in any given circumstance, in any situation, once it's activated, I love what Pastor Johnson said. It does what it's supposed to do. It does its job. Amen. Amen. Okay, so whether that is rightly dividing parts and pieces mm -hmm. with precision, when you think about something that can divide soul and spirit, because soul and spirit are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't understand soul and spirit, that's a whole nother Bible study. So let's look at joints and marrow. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know what that is. When you think about a tool that can cut the human body 
because marrow and joints, all that's connected. But mm -hmm. something so precise, mm -hmm. it can cut where it needs to cut and never injure any other part. Mm -hmm. That is an active, strong, powerful tool. Yes. That just needs to be activated. But if it's sitting on the table, mm -hmm. it's just a sword. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cut anything until you reach and use it. Mm -hmm. It's just like your toothbrush. If you don't brush your teeth, I mean, it's there. It's a tool that you're supposed to use twice a day per the dental association. Right. Okay? Really after every meal, mm -hmm. but at least twice a day. Mm -hmm. So, but if you just let it sit there in your medicine cabinet or on your drawer, in your drawer or, you know, on the sink and you never activate it, you wonder, why am I getting tooth decay? You know, why are my gums... Why are my mm -hmm. gums bleeding? Why are my teeth falling out? And we are, what is what is happening? Because you never activated the tool. How come nobody talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> or why is the devil constantly overtaking me? Mm -hmm. Why am I always taking one step forward and falling two steps back? Mm -hmm. Why am I mm -hmm. always in debt? Why am I never winning? Why am I never mm -hmm. succeeding? Why mm -hmm. do I never get promoted? All of these whys. Mm -hmm. The word of God has to be active mm -hmm. by faith. Mm -hmm. But then Amen. we also have to speak it. Mm -hmm. Death and life. Loud, loud, uh, death life, loud, the power of your tongue. Mm -hmm. But we have to, what's in the brain mm -hmm. comes out the mouth. Mm -hmm. So, what we've got to learn is if that we're um, digesting God's word and that's what's in our brain, mm -hmm. then when stuff comes at us, I can speak life over my situation by God's word, mm -hmm. not my power, but by his power. Amen. I can say to myself, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me because that's what his that's what he said. That was his promises. I can say, you know, um, no weapon formed against me shall prosper because what? That's his word. That's his promises. But I'm allowed to speak it because it was digested in me. I did what everybody has said all night. We you take the word and you you study it and you get it into your heart. Then you're able to speak it. Because Jesus had to speak to the devil and tell him this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I heard from all of you is having the word of God gives us a confidence and a boldness and a knowing mm -hmm. that the word of God is that thing that's going to go before us just like it was in the Ark of the Covenant because the tablets were in there which were the word of God and when it went before the people it laid everything to rest that gave them victory. So we can be at peace mm -hmm. knowing the word of God because it will be active, it will be powerful, it will allow us to have that Sabbath rest that we're supposed to have. It will do all of those things, and we would be at peace. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, at this time, we're going to go to our last scripture. I know we're a little, little bit uh, beyond our, our measure tonight, but um, by faith, uh, we're going to continue. Let's go to our last scripture. And I think we really have to do this one so we can sum it all up. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 through 18. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenius and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. I believe we're over here with Pastor Johnson. 
uh, this this passage of scripture, a workman approved of God. Mm-hmm. That workman, I, I always equate that to ministry. And I often hear ministers say, it doesn't take all of that <laughs> when it comes to preparation for preaching, mm-hmm. for teaching. It doesn't take all of that. Mm-hmm. Well, it takes all of that and more mm-hmm. to present yourself before God so that you don't be ashamed. Mm-hmm. So the minister of God, the worker of God, has to allow this word to work so that when I walk out in public, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't have to think, well, what are they saying about me? Mm-hmm. What are they saying? Thinking about what did I do last night Mm -hmm. that in my mind I know I'm guilty Mm -hmm. because I was, I did not, I preached the word, I spoke the word, but I'm not living the word. Mm -hmm. And so the word will work on you. Amen. And you will feel ashamed. You will feel guilty. But you need this word to handle it properly. So that it does lead you into truth. Mm-hmm. I want to be truthful before my wife. I want to be truthful before my congregation, mm-hmm. my friends, mm-hmm. so that when they see me, mm-hmm. I don't have to live a lie. Come Amen. On. So this word needs to work. This this sword needs to cut in me. Mm-hmm. Amen. It needs to cut on whichever way it, it's swinging. <laughs> it needs to be cutting out some stuff mm-hmm. in me, so that that I can speak it. Mm-hmm. with confidence mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. amen mm-hmm. Rem Williams and with that cut you know you can run but you can't hide eventually the, the, the truth does, does come out um, and when I think about a workman or, or a worker you know you have to be qualified or credentialed mm-hmm. for your work amen um, there is, is is study for some people it may only be a X number of hours of a class for others, it may take a lifetime of schooling. (laughs) It just depends on what level of work to which they're called, but we are all potential workmen in the body of Christ. And so with that work, the credentialing in the body of Christ comes from that word. And it comes through that process of the sword. And as you're reading it and understanding it and digesting it, Mm -hmm. and even like Pastor uh, Johnson was saying earlier, even if you don't understand it, still reading it and reading it and getting it into your spirit, um, then what will happen is it will eventually convict. Uh, It will eventually help you to Mm self-examine and direct you because it is that precise of a tool it's a two-edged sword so it doesn't just cut one way it cuts every way necessary yet still keeping intact the vital parts and not unintentionally disrupting other parts Mm -hmm. you know you you hear sometimes somebody will have a surgery and then the surgeon went to remove something but they also snip something mm-hmm. else while they were there. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen with the word of God. There's no snipping right. unintentional. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, 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 mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. purposeful. If it's yeah. snip, he meant to snip. It. Amen. Right. Okay. And so with that, as we go out into our work, whether it's in the church, whether it's in the world, whatever work we're called to do as Christians, as believers, it is important that we do it to the glory of God so that we're not like these two in the Bible and preaching false doctrine because of itchy ears. And especially Mm -hmm. in a time that we live in, Mm -hmm. which I believe is the end times. Mm -hmm. So all the evidence points to that in revelations, does it not? In some of the symbols. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so I think, I think that is important uh, in embracing, embracing that word and embracing whatever it is you're supposed to learn to be able to perfect your work. Amen. Be a good worker. And I think a lot of times we have to um, look within ourselves to be a good worker in God's vineyard 
when it comes to our own personal relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Um, do we really spend that time that we need to spend communing with him and in his word and really, as we've all said all night, digesting that word so that he can give us the correct explanation of the word so that when we do speak it, we're not stumbling someone else Amen. by speaking God's word, not from him, but through our own understanding. Amen. Amen. It says lean not to your own understanding, but his understanding. And then I have to go back. I have to go down to verse 19 because he talked about uh, 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 those two in individuals that, you know, they left that path of truth. Mm hmm. But it says, but God's truth stands firm like a fountain stone with this inscription. The Lord knows those who are his Amen. and all who belong to the Lord must turn away from evil. So in other words, if that word is inscribed in your heart, first and foremost, you don't have to explain to people who you are because God knows who you are and he'll give you the confidence to know who he is and that you are his. Mm hmm. So then if we go back to the beginning story. Jesus knew whose he was. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he Amen. didn't have to go back and forth with the devil. He didn't have to get into this big debate. Simply, I could tell you this, 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 because I know who I am mm -hmm. and whose I am. And I know I can stand on his truth. And as long as I'm speaking his truth, because I know his truth then God is my foundation. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, each one of our panelists to give us a uh, quick uh, uh, summary of the armor, the whole armor of God. I know we ended tonight with the sword of the spirit, but this is the last piece of armor in this study. So, um, we want to get a summary from each one of our panelists about the whole armor of God. And we're going to start with uh, Reverend uh, Williams, then Pastor Williams, and we're going to close it out with Pastor Johnson. Reverend Williams. Don't leave home without your armor. Um, every day. It, it is a daily, daily, the same way you get dressed and you, you put on your garments to walk out the door, that is what you're supposed to do with the armor of God. And every piece serves a purpose. It's critical. Amen. If you forget the helmet, your head is exposed. If you forget the sword, you have no offense or defensive weapon. Same mm -hmm. thing when it comes to the shield that can also be an offensive and defensive weapon of protection. So if you are missing any part yes. of your armor, and it has to be your armor. Amen. The armor of God. Okay, you cannot say I forgot my armor, so I need to borrow yours, Reverend Brown, because <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to fit. And I'm not, right. you know, you know, we're going to have a, a potential situation where so, 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 somebody's going to be exposed. Somebody's going to be exposed. <laughs> you know, it, it may not fit the same the same way. So the whole armor, every part, every piece is critical every day. Amen. She summed that up very good. Um, we have to always put on those things that God has given us to protect us because he does understand that we're going to be tempted. He understands that we're going to go through some things. He understands that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's the, the, the beauty of God that he understands that we're imperfect beings living in an imperfect world, mm -hmm. but we serve a perfect God Yes, who gave us all of these tools. And as believers, what we have to learn to do is use all of your tools, use all of your armor and use it at all times. Amen. Because that is what's going to keep you rooted in God. And that's what's going to protect you. He gave us this for our protection. Use it. Amen. We have some young people who were 
dealing with some some issues. One of those issues was homosexuality, and uh, we we asked, "How can how are we going to address this? How how are we going to bring light to this? What what how are we going to help them?" And after some roundabout discussion, we came to the conclusion that we needed a boot camp, and in the boot camp. We're going to teach the armor of God. Mm. And in that that experience, uh, it was awesome because we, the word gave some instructions how to live life Mm -hmm. and how to handle life and how to handle certain situations. So I said that to say that the armor helps us to live. And if you do leave home without it, Reverend William, you're going to be exposed. Amen. Reverend Brown. So it will address every issue, the word will, and the, it will also protect you from those same issues and other issues. Mm-hmm. So the best words I think to close out on is put on the arm. Amen. And you can handle life the way Jesus handled life. And was able to send the devil away. Amen. And that's what we want to do in our lives. We want to send the devil away. Hallelujah. Well, you heard it right there from all of our panelists. Keep that armor on, wear it every day, and send the devil away. I like that. Amen. Real, real quickly. Huh? Reverend. Keep that armor on, wear it every day, and send the devil away. Yeah, you got something, Pastor? Yeah, we're going to bring our pastor. He walked in. I'm, I'm putting him on the spot to come on and, and help us close this out. On well, you nicer than me. I wasn't going to do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to thank my friend, uh, Reverend Johnson, Pastor Johnson, for coming and stopping here with us for Bible study, and Reverend Jackson on last week, and to our panelists for this session that we've had. Uh, One of the things that um, I I was over there just uh, enjoying Bible study instead of being up on the panel, but the final analysis is that when Jesus said, it is written, and then he started repeating what was written. And the thing that we have to understand is that when we're going through things, that because we don't know the exact words that's in the Bible, don't be afraid to say it is written and let the Spirit talk to you in terms of what God has said. We've got to be careful with what people are doing out there and how they are presenting things because Amen. it might appear to be real. And in the final analysis of it, it's not real. It's not what God has said. So we know that Satan is running to and fro, and I heard someone say that earth is Satan's ground. But we are not of this earth, and we are not of here. And so follow what is written. Jesus gave us the perfect example. It is written when he was tempted, and he had reason to be tempted because he was hungry. And then we have get to- so tied into mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's what Satan had. He looks and sees what we need, and our needs are stuff. And we've got to be careful about that and stick to the spirit. We thank God for you, for everyone for this lesson here because this was actually the lesson for life. Amen. Thank you. Could you close us out in prayer, Pastor Camp? <laughs> <laughs> I sure will. Let me get behind. I don't want y'all to be behind me. <laughs> Say, get me behind. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come on this evening, this Tuesday night, as we come to study your word and get the true meaning of what you were trying to tell us when the word was written. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your son Jesus, for the example that you have given us. You could have left us alone a long time ago, but God, you saw fit that you you needed us to love you. And Lord, we know just like Martha and Mary, as was preached on Sunday, Martha was a worker. But we know that work is not everything, and Mary was a worshiper. And we know that we have been sent here to worship you. And so God, now in terms of worshiping you, it is to show love to everyone. And so God, when we leave from this place and when we speak to those that are out there, let people know what love is really about. 
even in this time and age where hatred seems to be the thing, your love still prevails. And so, God, we ask now that you continue to strengthen us. And, Lord, when we have that, that sword, that we don't lay that sword down because we have to activate that sword, activate the word, because the word is going to save us. And so, God, right now we say thank you. Thank you. We say thank you for this panel. We thank you for Agape Fellowship. We thank you for Mount Sinai. We thank you for Facebook. We thank you for YouTube, for all of those vehicles and those things that we use in order to know the word. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. And it's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Camps. Well, again, we thank you and we thank all of our panelists for tonight with the whole armor of God. Join us next Tuesday when we start a study on giving, giving. And are we good in our giving? So uh, with that being said, we thank you. We appreciate you. And always remember, here at Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. Love is what we do. Good night. God bless you and have a good evening. We are a Bible believing, Bible teaching, Bible preaching church. We are Agape Fellowship a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your weekly soul food with Reverend Troy Roland for Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings via YouTube. There are multiple ways to worship with us through giving. Follow us at Agape Fellowship BC on Facebook and Agape Fellowship MBC on YouTube. For more information, visit our website at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. Thank you for joining us. We will see you soon.